spin, roll, shuffle, shake, spin, roll, shuffle, shake. Round and round and round she goes. Where she lands, nobody knows. I love games. A any game. Not gaming though. Not sitting in a room, staring forward, blinking, staring at a screen, screaming, die, die, die. Your ultimate goal being to hang on to a life. What about living a life? No, for me, it's all about the board game. The familiar squeak of a new box. You know the one, uh, that weird noise, somewhere between a uh, creak and a fart? <laughs> <laughs> the unwrapping of the board. Setting up of the playing field. The battleground. <laughs> what goes where? Taking out the avatars. Unwrapping the questions and the cards and the shaker, the dice, the squeaker, the timer. Oh, with the ti sand timer now, yeah, that, that's the real pressure. Teeny tiny grains of sand pour, well, flowing through this minuscule aperture at a seemingly accelerated rate. I didn't believe, and I still don't, that it's an actual minute. Once, when I was little, incensed at how quickly my turn had passed. I was losing, obviously. I lost the plot. That's not right. That's broken. A minute is much longer. Much, much longer. What? You cannot be gravy! It's exciting, though, isn't it? The possibilities, you know? Luck or chance. Will I make the right move? The right choice? Will I do it on time? Will I roll four and climb up the ladder, or will I roll three and slide down the neck of that vile snake? <laughs> Do we lose or draw? I mean, let the fun begin. <laughs> Two tape players. That's fine. Uh, I like. Uh, I don't know when this all begins. You know, uh, maybe it's when we're very small. Hide and seek, running, chasing, competing. It, it must be when, maybe it's with a simple card game, a memory game perhaps. I reach and I turn a bowl of apples. I reach and turn again. Ah, oh, damn. It's Granny and Arkinger. Where did I put those damn apples? It's okay. It's okay. Reset. I got this. Remember where the apples are. Remember where the Granny is. And then without any hesitation, we reach and turn again. And then, though, you have to progress, you know. Things have to get better. Not just in memory, but in speed and skill. I look at you, I look at the cards. I'm watching you, I'm watching the cards. Ah! <laughs> it's exciting. And, and frightening. Yeah. It's like a jewel. A modern jewel without the gun. Mano o oh mano. Who will make the first move? Who will be the first to gain the advantage? Nobody leaves until there's a winner. And then, of course, you add more players. You know, three to four, five to six, seven to eight. All the combinations are possible, odd and even. It doesn't matter now, because you're a team. And making decisions together, deciding, conferring. No, I think it should be... Do you know what? You're right. Yeah, no, first thought, best thought. We'll go with you. Yes, we got it right! <laughs> we have beautiful minds. They will speak of this for years to come. <laughs> No. Really? Oh, I'm so sure. Oh, God, you said that too. <laughs> the duel away. I'm sure it was the tigers. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Bad. Beginning.
Yeah. <laughs> I've never been able to sit still. I've always had to be moving and doing. And as a kid, drawing. Always drawing and doodling. I had a lot of energy as a child. If I was a kid now, I'd probably be diagnosed with um, AD, uh, ADHD. That, that, yeah, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> oh, no two ways about it. I was hyper. Yeah, our apartment, uh, which was my home at the time, was in Gigan, in the north of Spain. And in front of it, there was this big park and uh, we would run in there, run and run and run, just to burn off all the energy. <laughs> you see? I think that's my earliest memory, running and playing and chasing in that park. Oh, and on my grandmother's farm. My grandmother lived on a farm way up in the mountains. Yes, oh, it was beautiful up there. Beside a forest, it had the best chestnuts. The kind you can roast and eat, not the Indian kind you have here. And in that woods, I would get to my favorite tree and I would sit there in my special place and I would draw. I draw the branches. I love branches. Not the trees so much, but the branches are beautiful. And if I wasn't in these woods, then I'd be under the Oreo. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's not an American biscuit with a creamy white filling. No, it's a cabin in Spain, a kind of like a tree house, and under which my grandfather would save the hay from humidity. And if I wasn't sitting beside the hay on an old wagon, I'd be sitting up above it with my legs dangling, rubbing the dog and writing, sketching, always sketching. <laughs> Time alone, or time with others, that, that was paradise. Hmm. But we were really unsupervised. We could play and play and play for hours until we had to stop to eat something. Uh, because mm -hmm. dinner and lunch are so far apart in Spain, you have to stop to eat something. Usually about five bocadero maybe, which we'd gobble down in a rush so that we could run and beat the others to sit in my grandfather's favourite chair <laughs> and watch our favourite show, McGeever. <laughs> Paradise. Um, yes. And then in the winter evenings, the Monopoly board would be laid out. Yeah. Or Parqui y la Oca. Ludo. Yes. And we'd play and play for hours. My grandmother, my aunties, my cousins, my brother, my dog, my team. <laughs> going back to our apartment in Gigan after that was like an adult going back after their holidays. <laughs> I, uh, well, I suppose it was kind of an emptiness, you know, no warmth, it wasn't an easy home, but no matter because playing and socialising brought me to life. <laughs> Speeding fine, 15 euro. Oh, typical. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever heard of Evaristo Valley? Oh, he, he's a famous, he's the most famous citizen of Gigan. Yeah, he, he was an artist and when I was little I wanted to paint just like him. Oh, I wanted to be an artist when I was little. And we would go to his home, which was also a museum. And we'd go when I was a child and then again, when I was at school. Oh, I was such a big fan. Uh, maybe not so much now as an adult, but back then he was everything. And I was so impressed that I declared it to my teacher, Adesina, when I was sick. Six. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, children, what does everybody want to be when they grow up? <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to be like a very Valley. I want to be the second most famous painter in Qigong and I will be a famous artist when I grow up. <laughs> I probably should mention at this point that school hadn't been going so well for me. Yeah, all that sitting down, sitting still, doing nothing, no more running, no more chasing. What was that about? But my teacher, Adesina, uh, she... Um, she was like uh, like those little dogs, um, like a little Toro. 
the bull uh, what do you call them a bull bulldog exactly yes and she <laughs> on this day it was perhaps the straw that broke the camel's back and she scrunched up her face even tighter and shouted no 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 more painting no more drawing oh you're a bad girl mad bad at your maths bad at your studies no 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 Grab my arm like a carpenter's voice grabs a piece of wood. I still remember the pain of it. No, 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 no! So I did the only thing I could do. I kicked her in the leg. <laughs> 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 that was a pattern that <clears throat> went on in my life for a while. <laughs> Hating that school. Kicking and being kicked. Being beaten and fighting back. <laughs> On these days, when one of those instances happened, I'd run to be in the arms of my mother. But my mother, well, she wasn't a very strong woman. Uh, probably a product of her upbringing. Her mother, my grandmother, was a very tough woman. Uh, understandably so. Um, her mother, a broken woman who had lost nine of her 11 children, uh, died when she was nine. She just gave up on life and starved herself. And then my grandmother was left to spend the rest of her childhood looking after the children of the strange women that her widower father brought home. My mum, though, was a clever woman, but she got pregnant young, and tradition was that she had to marry my father. She was anxious and wanting to keep all around her close and secure. Don't cry, darling. Your teacher was cross because she's jealous. Hmm? Yes, her daughter is good for nothing. Mm. Forget the painting. Yes, you don't want to end up a beggar, do you? No, no, forget those dreams. Forget the painting. Be a good girl. Stay close. Hmm? Forget those passions. You don't want to end up like your father, do you? My father was a painter, a good one, and a musician too, a very good one. Yeah, he had his own band, they were very popular. He was a publisher as well, and uh, well, a photographer, and then he had his own publishing business after that. I love him, of course, but he was just never there. He, well, despite having a wife and four children, he liked to live the single life. I, I think I'm about, Ten memories of him being at home when I was little. The, the clearest one is of him at his easel. Mm -hmm. Why are you colouring the mountains blue and lilac? Because, my dear, the mountains are blue and lilac. <laughs> mountains are green and grey. That is true, but, uh, well, that's from close up. What colour are they from far away? Well, when you stand in your grandmother's field and you look off to the mountains, what colour are they then? Blue and Well, my mother was a single mother, really. She used up a lot of her passion and her energy looking after us and trying to find the answer to that same question. Where is your father? Where is your father? Get your coat on, help your brother. We have to go find your father. And off we go, walking the streets of Gigan, trying to find my father, who'd generally be found in a bar somewhere, surrounded by women or his friends. Like I said, he liked and lived the single life. He didn't play by any rules. He dedicated his life to himself. I think the depression kicked in maybe when I was about 
10 or 11. Our apartment was very close to the school and I remember coming home from school and opening the front door and seeing toys strewn everywhere all over the floor. A new baby brother had come after 10 years so there was always toys and games everywhere. When in the midst of the mess sat my little baby brother crying. My mother was in bed. One teacher that I liked. Yeah, he spoke to me kindly. Well, in a tough and angry kind of way. <laughs> he was more like a life coach, you know, than an inspiration. You must work hard for what you want. Expect nothing to come from the air. Work hard. And have no pity for yourself. Forget your sadness. Live your best. He knew about my home situation, so I think he thought tough was the best way. He wasn't alone. Toughness and rudeness was a way of life in Jigan. It had to be. History had left her mark. I think trauma seeps in to the DNA of a people. It, it passes down first whole. And then in other generations, it passes through in a mutated form. I don't know when it passes through completely. I don't know when we can start again. When we are refreshed, reset, clean. I worked hard at school. I uh, was good, I got good grades. I played the game, I followed the programme. Now I still do do that I drew and I wrote when I could, <laughs> hoping that the game would change. But the refrain always re remained the same. No, ah, no, 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 not possible. Uh, no, no point, no, no, not worth it. No, 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 you mustn't. No, 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 I shouldn't. No, 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 do not pass go. Then it was 1995, and my father's turn to take the bad card. Bankrupt. Go straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not go to university. Do work with your father and help him fix the business. Do study software development. Do not collect 200 pounds. It's okay. It's okay. Reset. Roll again. It turned out that my idol, you know, Evaristo Valley, his life didn't end too well either. Yeah. When he was 10, he moved to San Juan de Puerto Rico, but then his father died, so he had to move back to Asturias. And then when he was there, he worked in a bank and in an oil refinery and uh, in a printer's. And then he went to France, and that's when he painted. So then he moved back to Spain and decided to dedicate himself completely to painting. And then for the next few years, he went from Spain to Paris, Paris to Spain. And then he had to come back to Spain because his mother died, but then he locked himself in a house for years because his mother's death had aggravated his agoraphobia. And then while he was locked in the house, he wrote loads of plays and novels, one of which was Ove and Isabel. But then it wasn't a big hit. And so disappointed he was by the sales, he gathered up all the copies and he dumped them in the sea. But then while he was in there as well, he wrote a novel called El Satana, which was a dramatic comedy, comedy about the October Revolution. A very unfunny time. And that was never published in his lifetime. So he died in 1951 in Jigal. Did you ever feel you were just born in the wrong place? I do. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. 
I'd met him in Salamanca, his hometown, in the Irish Rover Cafe Theatre, actually. <laughs> Maybe it was meant to be. <laughs> I, I still remember it. The Christmas lights and the music and the chairs. They were theatre chairs. Red, velvet, soft, uncomfortable. <laughs> he was funny, a good talker. <laughs> We dated for a couple of years and then we got married. And then we moved to Valencia. At last, I had my own home and we were a proper family. Now, everybody in Valencia works in cube-shaped offices. And when they're finished in their cube-shaped office, they go home to their cube-shaped homes. Square people living in squares, packed in like sardines, Always busy, always stressed, way too much passion, too much coffee. <laughs> Where was the art? Where was the blue and lilac mountains? What am I doing here? Of course, we never ask these questions out loud in case we get an answer we don't want to hear. <laughs> I was starting to lose control of the game again. I needed a signal, you know, an arrow, a sign. A flare! Oh, excuse me. Hola, como esta? It's my brother in Dublin. Uh, excuse me. Hola! Oh! Oui! Hola, si, si, eh? Wow! Oh! Si! No! <laughs> really? Oh, si, yes, maybe. Oh, well. I don't know, um, okay, yes, of course, come on. Whee! Oh, advance to go, it's 2003, time to start your new life. Don't forget, collect, collect 200 euro. <laughs> we left our home in Spain. A green land with mountains and rain. And we came to live in our new home, Ireland. A green land with mountains <laughs> and rain. My brother might have oversold it. <laughs> oh, some people don't like the laid back ways of the Irish. But I love them. Oh, people in Spain have way too much passion. Oh, I really felt I could breathe. I I could feel my lungs expand. We were away from the politics of Spain, the noise and the anxiety of Valencia and oh, the claustrophobia of Gigong. Peace at last. Roll the dice. Reset. Begin again. <laughs> Ireland was such fun. There was music, and there was dancing, oh, and there was travelling all around Ireland, and there was sketching again, so much sketching, oh, and on these trips around Ireland, people would recognise me, they would say, oh, are you, and then they would hear my accent, and then they were like, oh, I'm so sorry, you're so like Jane from off the road, you're the spit, so familiar, familiar. That was true. I felt like I'd been here before, like I was of this land. Oh, <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> and then there was a new job. Good pay. First day. <laughs> I was going to make some new friends. Maybe some Irish friends. Maybe some creative types. This is the land, after all, of artists and writers. <laughs> Hello, are you Irish? Spanish. Hola, how you doing? Italian. Oh. <laughs> Venezuelan. Oh. <laughs> South African. <laughs> My boss was Irish, I think. <laughs> no matter, these are good people and there was good times to be had. Just keep dancing. And I did. And as well as the dancing, there was parties and music and new games and good food from all around the world. 
and even more dancing. <laughs> Maybe I should slow down. No, no, keep dancing. Maybe I should go back to study. No, 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 we need a car. Save, save, save. <laughs> work, work, work. <laughs> then there was travel all around the world. Oh, bliss. But no more time for that now, because we want to save for our first home. Work, work, work. <laughs> save, save, save. Box, tick, goal, tick, goal, tick. <laughs> work, work, work. Save, save, save. Banks, crash, one year of unemployment. So I learned to play the violin. <laughs> my teacher says I have a real talent, so I keep playing. But then my teacher has to get another job, and then I have to get another job. <laughs> and then it's 1995 again, and it's all money, 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 and no, 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 you can't, no, it's a waste of your time. It's too expensive. The music is bad. Mala. No. No. No time. No time for me. Work. 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 No time for you. No time to talk. No time. No time to make it right. Well, there was no bitterness. No. No. Well, we grew together and then we grew apart. No blame. No. No. Just sadness. So much sadness. We went back to Spain in June 2015. When we first left, I started the parties again. Dancing helps to heal, right? And I was free and single, right? But soon they weren't parties to heal or parties to feel free, they were parties to say goodbye as everybody um, moved on, moved away. That's when it came the anxiety and the regret and the loneliness and the sadness is so consuming. Suddenly you don't want to go to work. You don't want to meet new people. You don't recognize yourself. I took a break from things then for a little while. I'd lost the game. I'd failed at love, I'd failed at marriage, I'd failed at work. I'd lost my lead. We keep trying to start again and again, but you can't see the finish line. You can't get home. You must not advance. Miss a turn, take three steps back. Eventually, when you've been in the darkness for long enough, you have to look for the light. And I did. Uh, my light was found in my new job in the library. Hmm. It was a different world, a bright world, and a very different world from the world of reports and deadlines and bonuses. <laughs> um, oh, uh, the irony isn't lost on me. Y you know, that the girl who couldn't move, who couldn't sit still, who always had to be doing and moving. Well, she found her happiness in the quietest of places. Now, when it's busy, it is really, really busy. <laughs> but when it's quiet, you can just have time for yourself and space. I can sit, and I can read, and I can write, <laughs> and I can sketch. <laughs> but I 
tell you I love landscapes. I draw landscapes. When I draw an image, I like to capture not just the image, but a feeling as well. That's very important to me. I'm a, despite all the odds, uh, I'm a positive person. I lost some friends. The inevitable wreckage and the carnage of a breakup, but I made new friends. And I have upskilled in technology. Yes, I can now communicate with the friends that moved away on WhatsApp and email and phone. And I've dipped my toe into the world of love again. It's very hard. Yeah. And if you can think of the energy you had in your 20s versus the energy you had in your 40s, modern love is hard. <laughs> My mother has Alzheimer's now. Her short-term memory isn't great, but we speak on the phone and we have beautiful conversations. I try to make her laugh, you know, to dispel any negative thoughts, and it works. My dad take care, takes care of her at home. Uh, he had a heart attack a number of years ago. Changed his life. He's a different man now. He always comes home. Nobody knows what way any game will end. Home for me is uh, having nurturing people around me. I don't need that in a physical sense, I just need to know that it exists. And I have that here. Ireland is my home. And now cranium is my drug of choice. <laughs> See, the game for your whole brain. Yeah? You will not believe what your friends can do. <laughs> I like it because it has well, lots of variety. It's not monotonous. Unexpected twists and turns. No matter what your ability, no matter what your language, you'll find something in cranium. Fail or flourish. Oh, doesn't matter. You can be good at cranium. <laughs> and the rules are unclear. Messy. I like that. <laughs> Yeah. It turns out that I'm still in the game. <laughs> it's my turn now, and I'm playing for me. Spin, roll, shuffle, shake. Round and round and round she goes. Where she lands, 